Hello, my name is Stephanie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I'm going to do a mermaid core inspired makeup look. I'm also going to do a quick little demo of the Lisa Eldridge Kitten Lash Mascara. I have filmed a review of this. Um, I'm just not sure if I can use all the footage and I may have to tweak it a bit, but um, I just wanted to show you what that mascara is like and do a little quick mini review as, of it as well. And I'll also show you a couple new things from the Chanel Spring Summer collection that they released, although granted most of those pieces have sold out now. So first I'm going to create a bit of a pearly rosy base for this look. I'm going to use the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lyrics in Cressida and I'm going to mix it with the Chanel Premier Ombre Lac in Rose Quartz. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the Ombre Lac is, it is quite pink. It's like a healthy glow pink, which makes sense given uh, the collection that it came out in. And, um, and it gives that kind of sun-kissed look if you have my colouring. Um, and the Lisa Eldridge one is a pearly white sort of shade. Um, on me, I feel that the golden pearls in it are predominant, even though there are some peach and pink pearls in it. Um, but for me, the kind of golden finish doesn't really suit me so well. So I find it's nice if I mix a bit of this in because it shifts it a bit more pink. So what I usually do is I usually just put a little dab on each eye and then just mix it. And it really just depends on how much of each color I want. So next I'm going to go in with this shade by Chantecaille. It's a limited edition shade. It was from a collection some years ago and I actually hunted the shade down, but I hardly ever use it. So I thought I'd pull it out and try to make good use of it. It's a beautiful sea foam green type of shade. Then I'm going to line underneath just to try to get a bit more of this beautiful shading without it being overpowering. Next, I'm going to go in with a, an eyeliner from Chanel. It's the Stila Ye Waterproof. It's from this sum, spring summer collection. It's the color Bleu Abyss. It is not the smoothest eyeliner, I'll give you that, but the color is just beautiful. Next, I'm going to show you how this Lisa Eldridge Kitten Lash Mascara works in action. So this is what my lashes are like. They're quite straight, they're quite fine. Um, I don't like the super voluminized eyelash look. Uh, I almost always go for lengthening and defining. Um, so if you like that kind of clumpy voluminized look, then this is not the mascara for you. So this wand is so soft and I wouldn't recommend that you jam it in your eye, obviously, but it really just seems to grab the lashes. 
So I'm trying to build it up so that you can see the difference. Now, I am not sure if you could appreciate this, but it has a true lengthening effect to it. I feel that when I put this on, my lashes kind of grow a millimeter or two. I ne almost never do my bottom lashes, but I will do them because of this green color I've put underneath just to kind of highlight it a bit. The lashes that I have the mascara on and the ones that don't have any. I think this mascara is quite phenomenal. Um, it's a winner in my book. Um, and, and if you, you remember, I didn't use any eyelash curler. Um, before I did this and my lashes are quite straight. It does really fan them out and defines them. That's what is claimed. And it also claims to lift them a bit and I think it does all of it. It claims to be smudge proof. So this is the bit of the footage that I'm not sure if I can use. Um, I did film myself doing an all day wear test, putting this mascara on one eye and a different one on the other eye. And I will tell you that the Lisa Eldridge one held up a lot better. I need to preface this by saying that pretty much all mascara will smudge on me. I think it's because my lashes are longish and this part of my face kind of is quite high. And so therefore, when every time I blink, my lashes tend to brush the side of my face. So if I've got makeup on or even just sunscreen, it just over time over the course of the day tends to wear it off. Um, this mascara does hold up quite well, but if I've, but it, it will smudge a bit. And I noticed the smudging about five hours in, just like a very faint little smudge, um, which I'll be honest, is a lot better than most mascaras on me. Um, Definitely by the end of a long work day, I work very long hours, so I t it may not be a fair test, but the reality is I do, for what I do, I can't be having worrying about my mascara running down my face. Um, so I tested it on a sort of 13, 14 hour day, and yes, it did smudge, but it wasn't as bad as the other one. The other thing to say about this mascara is I think to get the full effect of it, you need to use the wand both ways. Now I, for whatever reason, always use a curved wand like this. And I know in her demo, she used it like this. And it was only purely because of her demo that I did that. And I found that the kind of everything lash lifting, defining, lengthening effect of this mascara just was like oomph if I used the wand both ways. I feel that, yeah, you get the most effect when you do it like that. The other thing to say about the mascara is that it's really, really easy to remove. Um, I believe it has some sort of tubing element to it. Um, but it doesn't act like any other tubing mascara that I've used. I don't like tubing mascaras because I find them really hard to remove. I find I always have to rub my eyes quite a bit and then almost peel the tubing off my eyelashes and then I end up pulling my eyelashes out, which is not what I want because I don't have very many to begin with. Um, and that's why I don't use tubing mascara, even though I have the issue with the smudge smudging. Um, I do feel that this has an element of that in it somehow. It's just a very unique formula. I've never used a mascara like this. I tend to change up my mascaras. Um, I, I just get bored. But also because I'm always looking for the next best mascara because I always have that issue with the smudging. Um, so I'm really happy with this. And even though it does smudge a bit, I'm okay with it because of everything else that it does. I don't have to use an eyelash curler with it. I know that it's going to give me the finish that I like from my mascara. I know that it's going to hold up longer than any other mascara I've used, really. Um, and it doesn't smudge with water. It, it won't withhold going swimming. I've tried that as part of this test 
Um, maybe I'll put some of this footage in. So I have tried that. After swimming and a shower, there are little clumps on it because I think that part of the thing with the, like I said, the tubing element to it, that's what helps, helps it come away so easily. But say if it's raining really heavily outside, or if you've gone to the gym, you get a bit sweaty, um, or, and I demoed this, in fact, I will do it now, or if you spray water on it, so this is a mist I'm going to spray on my eyes to show you. It doesn't smudge. All right. Let's add some Chanel Balm Essentiel Mermaid Glow, again, from the Spring Summer Collection. Th these were the only two things I picked up from that collection. I wasn't that fussed about the eyeshadow quads. I think this is gorgeous. It's a lovely peachy sort of color. Um, the shimmer particles in it are a bit chunkier than uh, for most of the other Balm Essentials, but um, I think that may partly be because the whole mermaid thing, There's, if you look really closely, there's some blue and purple ones in here in a peachy base. Um, however, I need to stress that most of these balm essentials look pretty much the same once you put them on the face as highlighters. So, um, but I will just show you a swatch of this just uh, so you can see what it's like. See how pretty that is. I really uh, rate these. They're very nice, but they are, they do remain tacky. On that note, I'm going to finish off this mermaid core look with uh, the Velveteen Fawn and the new Sculpting Shade in 1C. I haven't done this combo before, so I, and I think it will be nice. I do have the Fawn Lip Liner, um, which I bought specifically to wear with this uh, Velveteen Fawn because that was a kind of lip liner shade that I felt I was just missing. So. Let's just put this on. Mm. I'm thinking actually now that I've got it on, I'm wondering if zero N would look better because this is quite peachy. Yeah, I'm not sure actually if one C is going to be too pink. Let's just try it anyway. Well, I quite like that because the one thing is I wish this color was a little bit more pink sometimes. Okay, so that's the finished look. Um, the Velveteen Fawn has been on my lips for some minutes now, probably about 10, 15 minutes. And as you can see, it has dried down a bit, but it's still like a lovely color. Um, it is definitely peachy and it's more vibrant than the true velvet version, as you could see. And how it is on me, I have sort of shifted it a bit pink by putting that 1C lip liner on it. But I think if you wanted to accentuate more of the peachy or brown tones within it, you could use a different uh, lip liner to get a slightly different effect. So I hope this was useful and thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.